Batman Begins, short movie review. Bruce Wayne loses his parents gunned down in front of him at age 10. He seeks justice, and when he finds the, or when the League of Shadows finds him, he, they train him and give him the means with which to become more than just a man, a symbol. He returns to Gotham and becomes the Batman, fighting crime, solving the overall mystery which you know of, of the plot, tr trying to figure out who's really behind what's going on in Gotham, and befriending L Sergeant Gordon, the one honest cop. This is a grittier and much more realistic interpretation of Batman than you know, any we've seen recently, and it's also a much more realistic one with every every bit of his equipment, including the revamped Batmobile, being based on real-life technology. The cast is great. Christian Bale is Bruce Wayne and Batman. The one complaint that I've heard at all, and that I do somewhat share, is the bat voice, which sounds like he's growling at people. It works when you're watching the scene, but thinking back to a scene of it, you kind of go, ah, oh, yeah, that's kind of goofy. Katie Holmes as Rachel Dawes is not bad, but there are a few scenes where it sort of stretches her credibility as sort of, she, she certainly lacks the gravitas to pull off an ADA, sadly. Other than that, the cast is just about perfect. Liam Neeson as Henry Ducard, the mentor of Bruce Wayne, helping him to become Batman. Michael Caine as Alfred, really capturing this surrogate father kind of thing, really caring about Bruce. You know, the... Yeah, all of them are fantastic. This goes for, as usual with Chris Nolan, real-life practical effects over CGI, and it really shows. You feel more, much more of the sort of impact, and the fighting, the action is much closer. Sadly, it does get too close at times with the action sometimes, you know, often being too close, and sometimes it'll then cut to a, you know, really wide medium shot, and it's just very disorienting. This works well when it's Batman, but before he comes back, before it becomes Batman, and just in general when it isn't Batman, when it's not necessarily supposed to be disorienting, the fact that it is disorienting is really just a testament to the fact that Chris Nolan is not really an action director. He is a psychological thriller director, which is a surprisingly sen sensible direction to take Batman in, and you really feel the dread that his enemies feel when he attacks them pulling them into the shadows, with even us not seeing him. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below, it's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.